Welcome to this next video in the playlist on group theory. In this video, what we're going to study is groups of order 12. Okay, so we're going to have some finite group which we'll call capital G, and what we know about capital G is that its order is equal to 12. Okay, so what I'm going to do straight away is give you the major claim of this video, the major theorem that we want to see about groups of order 12. Okay, so we'll call this Theorem 1, and the entire video will really be dedicated to proving this theorem. Okay, so Theorem 1, then, is that this group of order 12, either it has only one Seelov free subgroup, or it's isomorphic to the alternating group on the set of four elements. And that is the theorem that we're going to dedicate this video to. So, of course, if we take the prime factorization of 12, we get 3 times 2 squared. Okay, so by Seelov's first theorem, we will have Seelov free subgroups of order 3. Theorem 1, the claim of Theorem 1 is that the number of Seelov free subgroups is either equal to 1, or if you know that that's not the case for your group of order 12, then you can instantly conclude that your group, capital G, is isomorphic to the alternating group on the set of four elements. And this is the only group of order 12 that has more than one seed of free subgroup. Okay, right. So that's what we're going to um, try and prove then in this video. Okay, that either if you're a group of order 12, either you have only one Seedolf free subgroup, and therefore that Seedolf free subgroup is going to be a normal uh, Seedolf free subgroup, even a characteristic Seedolf free subgroup uh, of your group capital G, or your group is going to be isomorphic to the alternating group on the set of four elements. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do before we prove this is we're going to study the alternating group on the set of four elements. It's a very important example of a group of order 12 and deserves um, study in its own right. So I think in this video on groups of order 12, it's important to study this important group of order 12. So we'll do that now. Okay, so the little prerequisite, if you like, before we actually prove this theorem is the study of the alternating group on the set of four elements. Okay, so of course, from the video on alternating groups earlier in this playlist on group theory, we know that the alternating group on the set of four elements is going to be a subgroup of the symmetric group on the set of four elements, and it's going to be the subgroup that contains all of the even permutations. Now remember, in the symmetric group on the set of four elements, half of the elements are going to be even permutations and half are going to be odd. Therefore, the order of the alternating group on the set of four elements is going to be half the order of the symmetric group on the set of four elements. The order of the symmetric group on the set of four elements is 4 factorial, okay, which is 24, so half of that is 12, and therefore, bingo, the alternating group on the set of four elements is a group of order 12. What I now want to do is list out all of the elements that are actually going to be in the alternating group on the set of four elements. I want to show you what are all of the even permutations on the set of four elements. Okay, so, remember an even permutation is one where the sign is plus one, and remember that one of the interpretations of what the sign means is if you were to split the element down into a decomposition into transpositions, would you have an even number or an odd number? And even permutations would always have an even number, and odd permutations would always have an odd number. Okay, uh, now remember the from the video on alternating groups, remember the easy way to tell whether an element is odd or even is to split it down into its cycle decomposition and then uh, go along all of the cycles in the cycle decomposition, subtract one from their length, and that will be the number of transpositions that you can use to build that cycle. Add all of those together, and if the answer overall is even, then you are an even permutation, and if the answer overall is odd, then you are an odd permutation. And if all of this sounds like French to you, uh, do watch the video on alternating groups, where we uh, discuss this in much more detail. I'm assuming that you are familiar with all of this from that video. Okay, so what we're now going to do then is actually work out what are all of the even permutations of the alternating group on the set of four elements. Okay, so 
Firstly, the identity permutation is an absolutely easy one that we can instantly say is going to be even. Okay, clearly, if we were to actually work out the sign using that polynomial, the delta polynomial 4, 4, um, the identity permutation would not change anything, and therefore the number of negative ones that you'd have to pull out, the number of those terms in that polynomial that would flip, uh, would be zero. Okay, and therefore zero is an even number, so the identity is always even. Okay, and indeed, uh, you can build that out of absolutely no transpositions whatsoever, so there's the other reason that it's even. Okay, and I'll denote the identity by 1. So the identity is always going to be an element of A4. Indeed, for A4 to be a subgroup, it has to be there. So there's another argument as to why the identity has to be in there. Okay, right. Now, let's look at the more interesting ones then. So we've got 11 more to do. Now, I claim that all permutations of the set of four elements that consist of a free cycle and a one cycle are going to be uh, even permutations. So if I have a free cycle and a one cycle, so if I decompose my um, permutation on the set of four elements down into its cycle decomposition and I get that it's made up of a free cycle with a one cycle, uh, then I claim that it will be an even permutation. And of course the reason is I subtract one of three and I get two. I subtract one of one and I get zero. I add these two things together and I get an even number. Bingo! It's going to be an even permutation. So let's have a look at all of these permutations that consist of a free cycle and a one cycle. And remember a one cycle just means that you fix an element. Okay, so uh, the most obvious example to start off with then, and I'll actually draw pictures for these, okay, is the permutation which is a free cycle of the elements 1, 2, 3, and then which is a 1 cycle of 4. Okay, so here's an example. 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, and 4 is fixed, like so. There is an example of a permutation that is made up of a free cycle. Here's your, and I'll colour it in, here is the free cycle. We are cycling 1, 2, and 3 here, and here is the 1 cycle, where you just send 4 onto itself. Okay, and clearly, you can imagine that that could be built out of two transpositions. You could firstly swap 1 and 2, that would send 1 onto 2 and 2 onto 1. Then you could swap 3 and 1, that would send 2 overall onto 3 and 3 onto 1. Okay, so it would be built out of an even number of permutations. So there's an example, and of course in cycle uh, notation this would be 1 goes to 2 goes to 3, and then you wouldn't bother showing the 1 cycle. Although if you wanted to, you could put it here as a 1 cycle just involving 4, and it would say 4 goes to 4, but we don't usually show 1 cycle, so I won't bother. Okay, now of course there's another one that's very similar to this. The one that you get if you compose this with itself. So if you square this, you'll get this one. So it's still going to be a free cycle involving 1, 2, and 3, and a 1 cycle involving 4, but now it's a different one. 1 goes to 3 this time, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2, and 4 remains fixed. This is the one that you get if you square this one, and it's still a free cycle. Okay, uh, so this in cycle notation would be 1, and then we'd swap around 3 and 2 there. So 1 now goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1. Okay, and indeed you could make this pic this one's picture look exactly like that one, uh, just by changing uh, the way that you've written out the elements. So if I was to uh, change uh, the order that I'm writing the numbers here, okay, so if I was to rewrite it like so, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, and then I was to show this mapping now, this set permutation, it would look exactly like the picture of this one. Okay, so these two elements are utterly equivalent. Don't be fooled by the fact that the picture there looks different to this one. This is just as much a free cycle as that one. I can make this one's picture look exactly like that one just by redrawing it in this way. So don't think that there's some difference between this one and this one. They're effectively algebraically equivalent. They're both made up of a free cycle and a four cycle. Okay, so there's another free cycle, sorry, not a free cycle and a four cycle, a free cycle and a one cycle. I got confused because it's four that is in the one cycle. Okay, they're both made up of a free cycle and a one cycle. Okay, but of course there are loads of other elements of this form, a free cycle and a one cycle, because we can now change which element is going to be involved in the one cycle, which element is going to be fixed. Let's move it to being three that is fixed. Now the pictures look less nice when we do this. Okay, I'll try and keep the numbers in order, okay, rather than changing the order, but of course changing the order would make the pictures look nicer. Okay, but if I 
do change the orders, you it's more difficult to see what I've actually changed. Okay, so I'll stick with just showing the numbers in their natural order that we're all familiar with. Although, of course, you don't have to do it like that. There's nothing in this problem that says that these numbers have to be listed in this way. Okay, it's just that we like to put them in that order for other reasons, because, of course, the natural number system uh, is an entity that we're all very familiar with. And we're using its symbols uh, to deal with this problem. Okay, so we're going to keep free fix this time. So free is going to be in the one cycle, and now we're going to free cycle the others. So one will go to two, two will go to four, and four can go to one. Okay, so if I write that out in cycle notation, it would be one goes to two, two goes to four, and four goes to one here. Okay, and of course, again, if I was to uh, swap 3 and 4 around, if I was to write this in a different order, I could make its picture look identical to that one. Okay, so it's just because you've chosen a silly way to order these, if you like, that this doesn't look like that one, but it could be made to look like that. Okay, and of course we can then have this one squared, uh, which would look like this, so I'll write this one out now. Okay, where 1 will now go to 4, 4 will go to 2, uh, well, and 2 will then go to, where will 2 go to 1? Okay, so we'll fix 3 here. 1 will go to now 4. Okay, uh, 2, where will it go? It will go to 1. And 4 will go to 2, like so. So this is now 1 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 2. Okay, so there are some more elements of this form, a free cycle with a one cycle. And of course, you can imagine that there are four more elements of this form. I could then have the ones where we fix two. Okay, and I won't draw their pictures out because this is taking a lot of time, and I'm sure you've got the intuition now. Okay, I'll just write out there uh, them in cycle notation. So we could have now, let's fix two this time. Okay, and then let's cycle the others. So we could have one goes to three, goes to 4, okay, and 2 is fixed in a 1 cycle, and then we could have this one squared, which will be 1 goes to 4 goes to 3, okay, so you just swap 3 and 4 around in the way that we've done always here, we've just swapped 2 and 3 around to make this one, we just swapped 2 and 4 around to make that one, so that's how I can very easily do that, so those are both elements again of this form, and then we could also have the one where we fix 1, so 1 will be in the 1 cycle now, so we'll have 2 goes to 3 goes to 4, and then we'll have that one squared, which will be 2 goes to 4, goes to 3, goes to 2. Okay, so overall, here are the eight elements of this form, a free cycle with a one cycle, and absolutely all eight of those are going to be even permutations. They can be very easily constructed out of two transpositions, so clearly they are even permutations. Excellent. Right, so we've now got eight elements, or well, in fact nine elements, plus the identity, uh, if we add the identity in there, of the alternating group on the set of four elements. So we're very close now. We need three more. So what are the other three elements going to be? Well, these are going to be the double transpositions, which I could also call two cycles with another two cycle. Okay, now evidently these are going to be made up of two transpositions. You can do one of them and then do the other and then you end up with a double transposition. Okay, so a two cycle with a two cycle, otherwise known as a double transposition, and indeed there are going to be three of these. So let me just show you these. So the most obvious one to start with would be the one where we swap one and two and three and four. So let's transpose 1 and 2, and then let's transpose 3 and 4. That's evidently uh, going to be an even permutation, because I could just firstly swap 1 and 2, and then swap 3 and 4 to build this, and that's two transpositions that it's made up of. And in cycle notation, it would be written like so, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Now, of course, there are two other double transpositions. Rather than swapping 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, I could swap 1 and 3, and then 2 and 4. Okay, or I could swap 1 and 4 and then swap 2 and 3. Okay, so those are the other uh, two double transpositions. So here now we have completed A4. We have the identity, we have the nine free cycles with a one cycle, and then we have the three double transpositions here. All of the other elements of S4, so all of the six transpositions, single transpositions, where you just swap two elements, and all of the six four cycles, which you can, uh, if you like, write out for yourself, uh, those are all going to be odd permutations, and therefore they will be in the other coset that A4 will partition S4 into. 
okay? Uh, so we now have all of the elements of A4. So to write it out in full then, A4 as a set looks like so. You have the identity element, you have all eight of these three cycles with a one cycle. So we have one goes to two, goes to three. We have one goes to three, goes to two. We then want the ones where we fix three. So we'll have one goes to two, goes to four. We'll have one goes to four, goes to two. Then the ones where we fix two, one goes to three, goes to four. One goes to four, goes to three. Uh, then the one where we fix one, or rather the two where we fix one, two goes to three, goes to four, and two goes to four, goes to three. Those are all the three cycles with one cycles. Now let's add in the double transposition. So we'll have one goes to two, and three goes to four. We'll have one goes to three, and two goes to four. And then we'll have one goes to four, and two goes to three. Okay, and those in cycle notation are all of the elements of the um, group A4. And I hope, in principle, you could work out the composition table for this. I will not work out the composition table for this because it's got 144 entries and it would take a lot of time. But you know how to work out the composition table for this. If you want to compose two of these together, so if you want to compose A with B, let's say, where A and B are elements of this set, then you firstly do B. Uh, you act B on the set 1, 2, 3, 4, then you act A on the, what the set after it's had B acted upon it, and then you take the net composition, the net mapping, and work out overall what that is going to be. That's still going to be an even permutation, and it will be something back in here, and that's how you'd work out what any two of these composed with one another is. So there's our study then of the alternating group on the set of four elements. Okay, which is an example of a group of order 12. Evidently, it does have 12 elements. Okay, so we'll have a break here, and in the next video, what we'll begin is the proof of theorem 1.